Okay, so this is an optional mini lecture on the economics of externalities. Here I'm just going to walk you through the basics of how economists understand externalities using simple supply and demand curves. Now, remember from the full lecture that an externality is a cost uh, or benefit that comes from a market transaction that isn't factored into the decision making of those who are part of that transaction. So how would an economist graph this out? So here we have the example of a factory that is polluting. So this factory is producing some product and attendant to the production of that product is some level of pollution. Now, if you're, we're gonna focus here on the factory because it is the one that is producing the externality. So on this figure, the x-axis at the bottom is the quantity that the factory produces and the y-axis, right, on the left is the price that is charged for its product. And when economists draw a supply curve, they draw, uh, for the factory, it's an upward sloping curve because the factory wants to provide more goods um, if the price is higher. Now, importantly, we're focusing here on the factory because it's the factory that's producing the pollution. A market, of course, involves at least two parties. And in this case, it's the supplier, the factory, and the consumer that's buying the factory's goods. So here's the graphical illustration of demand, right? At a higher price, the consumer wants to buy less of the factory's product. In a, in a well-functioning market where there are no external costs or benefits, no externalities, then we would just say the market price is set at the intersection of the supply and demand curves, and that's an equilibrium that involves a certain price and a certain quantity. But remember, the factory is producing a negative social cost when it produces this good. So how would an externality look using that same graphical representation? Here's the factory supply curve. It looks exactly the same. And here's the, the con consumer demand curve, which looks exactly the same. And of course, there's the same market equilibrium. But now we have to think about what's the effect on society? Well, the so social cost, right, for the production of that good is much higher. Again, we draw the social cost parallel to the supply curve because it is a negative effect of production, the pollution that the factory is causing. So what does this new curve, the curve that would be the right level of supply if the social cost was taken into account? So what does this new curve represent? Well, the way to understand it is, it is the supply curve for the factory if the factory was taken into, into account the negative effect on society of the pollution that came from its production. So while the market produces the quantity Q, we actually should be producing much less of this good. We should be producing the, the, the level at Q optimum rather than Q market. Now, I haven't drawn this, but of course, Q optimum will also involve a higher price being paid for the good. But the total benefit for society as a whole will be higher at this higher price because now the social cost that is caused by pollution is being taken into account. The difference between these two is essentially the cost of pollution, right? So we can take this and we can apply it to all kinds of externalities. Uh, obviously, positive externalities, uh, if they were positive externalities, that came out of production would, would be red lines that ran parallel to the supply curve, but were on the other side of the supply curve because we're undersupplying the good um, that is providing greater social benefit than being taken into account by the factory. And we can apply this to any kind of uh, externality, including climate change. So let me just give you the same picture, but looking at climate change. So here we're talking about uh, all energy carbon intensive goods and services. And uh, these are being supplied at a certain level given private cost, but uh, uh, and at a certain demand given private value. And this is the level that the market would then produce. And, and, e and it would be an equilibrium, but it would not be a socially optimal equilibrium because we know that carbon emissions impose a cost, right? Um, 
So if we take that into account, and again, for simplicity, let's just assume that, the, that carbon emissions come from the production of energy and car carbon intensive goods and services, then we would see a much higher social cost. And the optimum level of, pr of production would actually be much lower. The difference between these two then is essentially the cost of carbon emissions to society. And so when people talk about imposing a tax on carbon emissions, they basically are talking about trying to shift the supply curve to reflect the social cost of these carbon emissions. And this could be done in two ways, either by a carbon tax, a tax on carbon emissions, usually expressed as some cost per metric ton of carbon emissions, or it could be done through a so-called cap and trade program where you set an overall limit, right, equal to Q optimum here on carbon emissions. And these are in the carbon tax and cap and trade are at the same level of uh, total carbon emissions, Q optimum, are equivalent. And I show that in my other mini lecture.